Okay, Drake here doing a quick vlog um, one day before Christmas Eve. This would be the last one probably for this year before I make some long trip out of town to go visit a friend of mine, Tal Nova. Worked on a few things at the office here at Orbit. This office is relatively annoying since their light turns off so fast now I can't even get any work done half the time without bringing my own lighting equipment. Um, yeah, at Orbit's expense. Thank you very much because I can't work in this nature. I have to sit down. I have to think. I have to be able to make something work. If it's just push, push, push for productivity, it's not really panning out. A lot of people don't like that. As a matter of fact, that's what people are getting into now. So that's why I'm trying to move into other ventures and other things as well. Um, not sure, but okay, a couple of things going on. Rathy Toys are selling. Um, I have some discounts on the site, so you can check out tmdrick.toys. Um, I might be throwing in a couple of fun raffles in January 1st, but I'm waiting for stuff to happen. Shit is hitting the fan by definition. And right now I check the stores, and only a week before Christmas, there's like clearance sales. There is zero. Is there a lot of car traffic? There's a hundred to a thousand percent more traffic, but no one's buying anything. So what's the point of everyone going out? I mean, okay, the gas price dropped down a little bit, so you can afford it. I mean, it was 36 to fill half my car up. It's not terribly bad. I usually get it a little bit cheaper from other sources, but right now, um, oh yeah, I've been getting a Dyna, the cheap one, but it pings around a bit. If you're a car guy, you know what I'm talking about. It, it, it idles a little weird. But I get Costco gas at idles fine, so I'm going to be going to a trip out, so it should be a little bit better on burning some fuel. Um, it's all the way in Tesla, Arizona. I'm trying to get the address is the only thing I think I'm missing, but i got to find out if I have all the profile made and his phone number so I can give him a call on the way out. I'm probably going to leave in Christmas Day or Christmas afternoon since there's very little traffic then, and I can zoop over. Um, I might try a few things on the way out, but yeah, this mission isn't really a planned mission, but I have, I think, one of his game boards. It's a pretty cool game, but like I said, I, I'll bring my EEPROM programmers and a bunch of tools because I don't know how much tech stuff I can do in troubleshooting it, but we can sometimes pull schematics. Um, I don't know if the green is off on it. Well, I'll have to show him in person. He's got a better monitor than I do, so it might actually render green correctly. Um, we have those video adapters. They work fine. They're not always the best because, you know, they're made in Chinese market. Don't always last long. So I've got one I use, but it works okay. Just I'm using a timing control done by an ESP, which is a pretty fast controller, actually, for its size. So it's got some capabilities to do some fun stuff with. It really should broken out to a real-time display, and then you can just push it there on the spot because it should go with the theme of the arcade industry but um that's the old style stuff so that's going to be fun and i'll be heading out that way i might make a few stops the bad thing about going in christmas day is that you'll run into that so more than likely i'm going to end up at around midnight to maybe so whatever when i leave because i might end up here first at this office work on a few things but it looks like i'm actually looking at the cameras I managed to fix six or something cameras the other day, replaced them, and tossed out the uh, defective cameras, ordered some more on back order, so that should be here when I get back. Amongst many things, I'll probably be doing camera duty and service cameras and trying to figure out where some cables went. If not, I may have to go through the roof and try to figure out where the cables did go because there was a few cables missing, and I see the holes for the camera. So here's the question I'm going to be asking No Way. No Way, when he first came out here, we said 16 and 16. If you want to put more in, then I'll have to start upgrading the equipment. Yes, the equipment can do 32, but it's not recommended because then you have to do all these crazy programming and all this other stuff. It will do it if you're cutting costs down, but I am just going to order another DVR, build it out, and um, would be nice if I actually get a little commissions on it because it seems to be finder's fees. But um, I will be monitoring the system. I don't know if it's new enough now to have the adaptive camera logic because I've seen that on some of the newer systems that actually track the serial number and assign the serial number to the virtual ports. One of the newer systems I recently installed, even if it was on the wrong side of the network, it was able to find it and assign it to a port. And even if... Um, if I disconnect it and then the IP changed, it still reassigned it back to that port. 
my problem is these cameras I don't think do that so I actually set aside a separate subnet routable subnet that is actually the one where I'm going to put all the cameras on I did that on purpose in order to keep the system a little clean but I might migrate them over to another sub subnet um, supernets and subnets whatever and this way I might be able to change it to a supernet on this side for DHCP if I do that as a supernet DHCP that means that instead of having 24-bit subnetting which is this, the one and use the first ones the router could be the last one doesn't matter so you basically have 253 hosts so super netting means you go the other way you borrow a bit from the network side so you increase that from 256 to 512 in some case you borrow two bits you get something like over a thousand hosts the crazy part is is all the broadcast is still in one one address range and the multicast is still there because there are their own grouping but the super net route and it's a migration route and I can test it and verify it because now I have a larger area open on an IP block that's further away from what we're using for all of our management tools the beauty of doing this is I can ease all the dynamic hardware into that supernet and then move all the other hardware one at a time as we group them down and then this would actually eliminate the need of having so much complex uh, routing rules because we're now at an age where 200 IPs ain't enough. <laughs> I'm going to say you probably need about 2,000 to 3,000. So if I create a large supernet, you can actually get around a lot of that problem by creating it that way, supernet rather than a subnet. See, the point of a subnet is that you have a router that's talking to each other on separate networks to get along hops on. We call them hops on the way, also known as trace route test tagging. But the hops on the way you're generally going to have we call block four because you pick an IP address that's that subnet is so small that you could only really have either eight hosts next one to eight is four if you did four you have one broadcast one end and if I recall the two in the middle so a lot of times people who buy static IP gets a block eight so there's an eight IP but they only, they only get really five and I'm like well that makes sense because you can't use the first one you can't use the last one so eight, seven, six, and one of them's got to be the gateway, which no one can understand why there's a gateway there. It's because you need a gateway to gate out. Quite similarly, that gateway address will provide packets that will gate into you. So, and of course, depending on the router topology you have, classic routing versus, or that's called IP routing versus network address translations, or IP masquerading. IP masquerading means you translate to one IP address. The router usually handles this, or a gateway. Um, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be a VPN tunnel halfway across the world. That's what VPNs do, is all they essentially do. See, there's nothing new. Once you learn the low level how the stuff, you really can't change it. But because of the flexibility of the stacked protocol, the intermediates, even though a lot of them have to talk IP, they don't have to be Ethernet. They could be serial link over IP. They could be an ISDN. They could be a radio signal. It don't matter, but most people, you know, when I was working in that area, most people kind of threw me off on there and that I don't know this and that. I says, you're right, I don't know this. I don't know at all, but you know what? I know what directions to go, and you know what? I'm not going to invent the wheel. I'd rather hire people to work underneath me, and I'm willing to share what we can create to the world. As far as artists coming to me, I hate to say it, I get like an artist every day to two days, and then the artists that I do end up using they end up blocking me later, so I, it's not worth it. No, no, it's not worth it anymore. No, if it is, my I'm betting on Wall Street, and I'm betting on the real estate market is going to stay afloat the longest. And the next to that is probably the tech market because they've grown better. Communication is kind of out the door, being replaced by tech. So I'm trying to keep up to date with trends. As much as some of the systems are stabler but you can't have a company without customers and you can't have customers without interest so i'm sorry an artist is a visionary so is elon musk and now they are kind of pissed off at him because as much as a visionary he is he understands one thing at the end of the day if you don't if you don't understand how capitalism works a depression is coming right next and uh, and I don't mean a depression from psychology, I mean a depression in the economic industry.
which is different than the depression. I've been depressed for a while, but I've been getting around it because I fight depression with what? Oppression. So let me find who to oppress.